Hi everyone, we've got a handful of headlines for today's Pelicanus news. I've categorized them into restoration, protected areas, and drawdown. These stories are truly incredible, and also reminders to me that conservation can actually work. Okay, in the first category of restoration, uh, a story coming out of InsideClimateNews.org. The European Union approves ambitious nature restoration law. The European Union strengthened its environmental policies with adoption of a nature restoration law that member countries hope will help them meet climate and biodiversity targets set under the 2015 Paris Agreement in a global biodiversity agreement reached late last year. The new measures go beyond simply preserving existing species and ecosystems. The law takes, uh, sorry, tasks the 27 EU member countries with finding ways to restore large tracts of damaged forest, wetlands and fields, as well as rivers, lakes and oceans, with an overall goal over the next few decades of restoring 30% of damaged ecosystems in the EU region, which spans 1.6 million square miles from the Arctic Circle to the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. The Nature Restoration Law was introduced by the EU Commission in June 2022 and, as originally proposed, would have required member states to establish recovery plans for 20% of the EU's land and sea areas by 2030, and for all areas in need of restoration by 2050. It also includes restoration targets for key habitats and species, including reversing the decline of pollinating insects by 2030, given how important they are to food security. Second category of protected areas. This one's really interesting. I'm excited to see this. This is coming out of eenews.net. President Biden will create national monument to honor Emmett Till. President Joe Biden will create a new national monument to commemorate Emmett Till, a 14-year-old black boy who was killing in the Mississippi Delta in 1955, helped spark the modern civil rights movement. The monument will be unusual, featuring three sites in two states linked to Till's death. It will also be the first designated by Biden to advance black history. Under the White House plan, Biden will mark the 82nd anniversary of Till's birth to sign a proclamation establishing the Emmett Till and Mammy Till Mobley National Monument in Illinois and Mississippi. It will be named after both Till and his mother, who chose to display the body of her mutilated son in an open casket at a Chicago church after he was lynched by two white men. The monument will include two sites in Mississippi, Grable Landing in the small town of Glendora, where Till's body was pulled from the Tallahatchie River, and the Tallahatchie County 2nd District Courthouse in Sumner, where Till's murderers were tried by an all-white jury and acquitted. It will also include the Roberts Temple Church of God in Christ in the Bronzeville neighborhood of Chicago, where thousands of people attended Till's funeral in September of 1955. The National Park Service included both Grable Landing and the Tallahatchie County Courthouse as potential sites to include in a new park site in December when it sent a report to Congress on Mississippi civil rights sites. After 15 years of hard work, we have finally achieved a designation that we believe is pivotal to our nation's story. Patrick Weems, executive director of the Emmett Till Interpretive Center in Sumner, said. Our final category of drawdown, a couple stories here. First one is coming out of thehill.com. The Environmental Protection Agency finalizes a rule furthering 40% phase down of planet warming HFCs. The EPA took another step toward reducing the use of planet warming gases called hydrofluorocarbons, issuing a rule moving toward a 40% phase down of the substances. Hydrofluorocarbons, also known as HFCs, are used in refrigeration and air conditioning. They can be hundreds or even thousands of times more potent than carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas. The EPA is required to make companies gradually reduce their consumption of the substances over time as part of a law that was passed in 2020 under a bipartisan energy compromise. That's fantastic. Uh, Moving to Canada, this one's coming out of Reuters.com. Canada releases framework to phase out inefficient fossil fuel subsidies. Canada released a framework for eliminating inefficient fossil fuel subsidies, making it the first G20 country to deliver on a 2009 commitment to rationalize and phase out government support for the sector. 
Climate policy analysts said the framework was an important step forward, but fell short by continuing to allow government support for oil and gas projects that plan to reduce emissions through technologies such as carbon capture and storage. This ensures that the only federal support for oil and gas goes to projects that decarbonize the sector and result in significant greenhouse gas emission reductions. Federal Environmental Minister Stephen Gilbull, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, told a press conference. Eliminating fossil fuel subsidies is part of a 2022 deal signed between Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's minister, sorry, minority liberal and the New Democratic Party, NDP, formalizing NDP support for the government. All right, this is a wide array of stories here. Love to see all of them though. Um, and I hope these stories bring some optimism and lightness to your month. And I look forward to sharing more in the future. Thank you.